Hello, baseball fans, and welcome. MLB The Show brings you the National League Championship Series. The Atlanta Braves going up against the New York Mets. Along with Chris Singleton, I'm John Chomby. Plenty of storylines taking shape in this series as we set the stage for Game 4, Chris. Well, the number one thing to discuss is just how lopsided this series has been. You know, you get to this point of the season, Boog, and you expect both teams to be on pretty even ground, but it's not played out that way at all. And when a team takes care of business with such dominance and gets out to a 3-0 lead, I just can't see this series lasting much longer. Yeah, that's usually the way it goes, but hey, Coming back to win the series has been done before. First pitch coming your way next. Just about ready to roll. And today's starting pitcher, Jay Mack. Yeah, Boogie put on a clinic his last time out. Strikeouts just seemed like every other hitter was walking back to the dugout. We'll see if that's the case again in this one. And now the center fielder, Michael Harris. The center fielder, Michael Harris. The pitch. That one finds the zone. And we're underway here in game four. The wide to kick the pitch. That breaking ball is in for a strike and quickly. It is nothing in two. Strikes. One gone here. Very frustrating right there as a speedy potential base runner win. But two strikes, you just struggle to put the ball in play. You don't even have to get a hit at that point. You can help your team just by reaching on an error. But some way, you got to find a way to shorten up the swing and put the ball in play next time. Here's Orlando Arcia. And that drops in for a strike. Swings through that one out in front that time. This guy at the dish excels in two strike counts. Got to be careful with him out there on the mound. misses it's a strikeout that's a pretty nasty pitch right there I'd call it a power curveball in the 80s it's got so much spin on it and you really don't have a lot of time to sit back and watch what it's going to do before you have to commit it was a good one for the swinging strikeout Ronald Acuna Jr. stands in now and watches strike one two outs base is empty hey seven straight strikes to start the frame he's got a chance at an immaculate inning Next pitch is outside. Got close to the immaculate inning, and he just couldn't find the zone right there. When you think about it, nine straight strikes, so tough to do. A yeah, big swing and a miss. Clearly, he was sitting on a fastball right there and just ended up out in front of the slider. Hey, you can't fault him for his commitment. Now he's just going to have to battle with two strikes. Got him. Strikes out the side to begin the game. What a start. Impeccable command in that one. Three batters, three strikeouts. That's electric stuff out there on the mound. Man at first. Now it's that the D.H. Hurt. Jay Mack. Big time power. Yeah. Base hit center field. 
and the postseason success continues for him. Quick throw back in. Lead runner holds it second with one gone. Now no that waiting cool. around right there. He was oh, ready to it. swing it on the first pitch. Hmm. You'll often hear the phrase oh, short to it, long yeah. through it, and that's a great example of it right there. Got the barrel in the hitting zone early, squared it up with the well-timed swing, and came away with a beautiful line drive in the center field. Kicks and fires. On the ground to third. Goes to second for one. And that's two. Well, we can never overstate it. Pitcher's best friend right there. Double play, gets out of the jam, saves some pitches. Top of the second, stepping in the long ball threat, Matt Olson. He's not going to get cheated up there. No, he's not. He's looking to do damage with every swing he takes. Right-hander back to work. Swing and a tapper that rolls foul. You'll want. Swing and a miss. Legends really are cemented in the postseason. You think of David Ortiz heroics for the Red Sox. Derek Jeter as Mr. November, or Randy Johnson in the 2001 World Series, just to name a few. That one close, ruled a ball. It's a ball and two strikes. On the ground, and that squirts through. Makes the turn and heads for second. And he's into scoring position with a leadoff double. Maybe a chance for our first run here. Just found a way to slap that ball down the third baseline. That's really excellent back control. And it kind of goes back to all those drills you see hitters do off the tee where it's placed in different spots. That was just nice. Runner in scoring position now and a good opportunity to push across the first run of the ball game. Here's Austin Riley. That one finds the zone. It's 0-1. Well, on that idea of postseason reputations, Boog, got to mention players like Carlton Fisk, Reggie Jackson, and Madison Bumgarner. We were doing that game. Those guys really shine in the toughest moments. Man, it's second. Rip to first. Caught. That swing right there tells me he's seeing the ball pretty well. I know it didn't produce a hit, but he made solid contact, and that's all you're looking to do anytime you're at the plate. Here's Marcelo Zuna. You have to be careful throwing him breaking pitches, even in an 0-0 count. He loves going after the off-speed stuff, and he's really good at hitting it. One of the best strikeout pitchers in the game, and that certainly is a benefit to him when he's in a spot like this. And here it comes. One out, the runner at second here in game four of the National League Championship Series. Swings through that one. Yeah, if you're going to be in the game in high leverage situations, you've got to be able to get the swing and miss and put hitters away. And yeah, the right hander deals. Got him looking. And now two gone. Most guys are very aggressive when they see the stakes out there on the base paths and can't understand why he wasn't ready to swing the bat. You've got to be ready to swing the bat in a situation like that with the go ahead run in scoring position. Ozzie Albies up to the plate. To the right side. He takes it himself to the bag, and that'll do it. Braves strand one. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. Hey, 
And we're back. Well, here we go. Top of the third scoreless game. And now the DH, Adam Duvall. Mac back to work. That's in there. Going along. Swing and a miss as he was out front that time. Swings and misses. It's a strikeout. Slider got him for strike three. Away, away, away. Clearly, that was the plan right there. He just wasn't able to put it in play. And that should tell you something as a hitter. Sometimes you're a little too conscious of the inside pitch, and you're not able to cover that outside part of the plate. So clearly some adjustments to be made next time. Here's Sean Murphy. That clips the zone. Strike one. Riding to the plate. Four. Ground ball right side. Alonso Out. takes it to the bag. And a couple of quick now outs. The center field, Michael Harris. Back to the leadoff spot in the Braves lineup. Here's the center fielder, Michael Harris. And that one is lifted in the air. Bader should have it. Makes the catch, inning over. Three up, three down for him there. We move on to the bottom of inning number three. No score. The batter, the designated hitter, Jay Matt. Lifted in the air, right center field. Harris sizing this one up. And makes the grab. And that is that. Fourth game of the NLCS. Here's the shortstop at the play. Orlando Arcia. As he turns on the rubber, and with that good live arm delivers, and he takes a strike. Well, after scoring runs, this is where you're looking for that shutdown inning. Get that hot team back in there to swing the bats. Line drive, base hit. So a runner aboard to start the inning. And now it's Ronald Acuna Jr. Outfield playing very deep, not wanting anything over their heads. That one fouled off. Acuna in 2023 with about as impressive a power-speed combination season as we have ever seen. The Braves down by a pair here in Game 4. The Braves always liked Acuna, but consider for a second... He was signed for $100,000 in 2014 out of Venice. To second for one. Plenty of time at first. That's a double play. For me, that's one of the toughest double plays to turn on the infield. The first baseman has to get inside, create a throwing lane to hit that middle infielder to start the double play, and then from there, completing it back to first. Really good job all the way around. And now Matt Olson up to hit. Doubled his first time up. And a foul ball. The pitch. And a foul ball. The 0-2. Struck him out. And it's a three up, three down inning.
And welcome back to the ballpark. Now here is Austin Riley. The third baseman. Austin. Riley. The wind of the pitch. Love it here at City Field. You know, it replaced Old Shea Stadium back in 2009, and Chipper Jones was really sad to see it go. It's actually the third home of the Mets since they started out at the Polo Grounds for two seasons before Shea was finished. Got him. Picks up strikeout number seven. Well, he's showing some pretty dominating stuff out there in this now one. Not just in terms of swing and miss, but well. also in terms of command. Mm -hmm. you know, all the strikeouts, they kind of speak for themselves, but when you don't walk anyone, you're demonstrating that you have the confidence in your abilities to truly go right after opposing batters. And here is Marcelo Zuna. I'm starting to run out for this offense, isn't it, Boog? I mean, it's not easy to play in a must-win game, especially when you're losing. Their season is on the line, and they know it. And now the count, one and two after the swing and the miss. And that's outside. Makes through that one. It's a strikeout. Well, that's a blue zone right there, or the cold zone on the hitting chart. Just doesn't have much success in that part of the strike zone. And a really good job of the pitcher executing. Try to go there as often as you can. The numbers are in your favor. All these batting for the second time, and that's strike one. If I'm at the dish right now, I am aggressive over the heart of the plate. This guy's been filling up the strike zone, so you know you're going to get a good pitch to hit. And as nasty as his stuff is, you might as well take all three swings. Ball one there. Two down, nobody on. And we're at the top of the fifth. Well, this offense has just been locked down. Almost five full innings of shutout baseball. Fights that one away. Still one and two. Kicks and deals. And a swing and a miss. And it's a 1-2-3 inning for the Braves. Braves go down quickly here. They trail it here, 3-0. Top six, Adam Duvall at the play. The designated hitter, Adam Duvall. Here comes a pinch. That catches the outside corner, and it's a one one I'm impressed by the number of first pitch strikes. He's not afraid of contact. Some guys, they'll nibble just because they don't want to get hit hard. That's not what we're seeing here. The 0-1. There's the strike. That curveball's been a big pitch for him today. He's been able to get ahead in the count with it. He's also been able to use it to put guys away. And ball one. Caught a break right there. Pretty good pitch on the outside corner. And he deals. Foul ball still a one and two count. One 
now at 10 K's with still a few innings left so expecting to add on to that total and you no know, pitchers are looking to have a strikeout per inning I mean that's excellent work uh, the way it looks now I mean he's going to have a better rate than that in this one so really good stuff working on the mound in this one so here's Murphy now outfield playing very deep not wanting anything over their heads. The pitch timer expired before he started his windup, so that's a ball. That must be incredibly frustrating for the pitcher, but this is all about creating more action and speeding up the game, and it's working. In the air, right side. Marte snags it for the second out. Now that the center fielder, Michael. So the lineup flips over. Michael Harris next up for the Braves. Ground ball up the middle. On the run, sends it over to first. In time, got him. And that'll do it. Make it six shutout innings for him out there now. It's the Mets three and the Braves nothing. Back here at City Field. And now here is Jay Mack. We talk so much about how starting pitchers prepare for their starts. I talked with Max Breed, and one of the things he told me back in 19, he and Lucas Giolito started using MLB The Show to go yeah, over scouting right. reports. Fires across the diamond, and that's one out as they get the lead off. Back here in Queens, top of inning number seven. Now the number two hitter, Orlando Arcia. And a swing and a miss. And a swing and a miss there. Just an outstanding job of spinning the baseball, moving it around, doing what he does. Oh, and two now. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. Shortstop takes the ball. Well, that's kind of what you expect in an 0-2 count. Excellent job of the hitter to have the plate discipline to lay off of that pitch. Righty delivers. Tapped softly on the ground. Lindor. One up, one down. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Let's the defense work behind it with another ground ball. Good execution. Here's Ronald Acuna Jr. at the plate. Right through there for a strike. Well, they say it's the best pitch in baseball. Strike one. You get ahead. Oh, a good hitter as well. There's a little bit more confidence to move through the at bat. And the 0 1. Chopped left side. And he picks it up and he'll put it in his pocket. Swings and misses. Struck him out. Chris, third time through the order and a couple of quick outs for the starter. Yeah, he's been very frugal today. Economical with the pitch count. Two outs, base is empty. So now to the plate for Atlanta. Matt Olson. That pitch in for a strike. It's 0 1. That's a strike. Right through there. Got it. And good work there as he gets a 1-2-3. Still in total command on the mound with seven shutout innings. It's the Mets three and the Braves nothing. Man at second now here with two away. That's so now here's the Mets DH. Yeah. Jay Mack. Yeah. One for three. That one is absolutely belted. 
That's back. Oh, that's going to leave a mark. He'll circle the bases. That's his fourth home run of the series. And they add on. It's 7-0. How in the world did he do that? That pitch was outside the zone, and he still got it out of here. Welcome to the game. First pitch out of the bullpen, a tough one. And you know he's just trying to get one in there for a strike. And on the other side is a hitter. It's a great time to be aggressive and let it fly. Leading and we're back. Line, now here is Austin Riley. Austin. Singy, you can't ask for anything more. This guy checks all the boxes offensively. He is the ultimate professional, and it doesn't just start at game time. It starts in the afternoon the way he prepares and gets ready for the ball game. I tell you what, his teammates feed off of the leadership that he shows on and off the field. And a pitch. Swing and a miss, and that's strike two. Okay. Got it by him. Yeah. Wow, short work to send him packing to start the inning and no messing around either. All three pitches were in the strike zone, attack mode all the way, and that's pretty impressive given the pop he was dealing with at the plate. Ozuna batting with one down takes a strike. Comes up empty. That's strike two. The Braves with a lot of ground to make up late here in game four. Oh, he doesn't get the call. Going to count one and two. And he grounds one to the right side. Acuna. Gathers and throws the first. Two up, two down. The batter number one. Second base. Two outs, base is empty. And here is Ozzy Albies. Oh, he doesn't get the call. Ball one. A swing and a miss, and that's strike one. One ball, one strike. Two down, nobody on. And downstairs. Next offering is in for a strike. Oh, and they're going to tag the pitcher with a pitch clock violation. That's an automatic ball. The pitcher must begin his motion before the pitch timer runs out. We're looking for a little more urgency out there. Dominant on the mound as he's through eight without surrendering a run. It's the Mets seven and the Braves nothing. We go to the ninth, and now it's the Braves DH, Adam Duvall. Adam Duvall. And a pitch. That's in there. One one. Yeah. 
Swing and a miss as he was out front. I mean, his pitch efficiency, ability to get ahead and count, at times pitch to contact, let the defense work behind him. That's why he's still in the game here in the ninth inning. Swing and a miss struck him out. Well, that's a curveball that people like to describe as a hammer or Uncle Charlie, and you can see why. It's not a looping slow curve. He throws it hard, and it gets plenty of bite on the end. Murphy in the box now. No balls in a strike. You just don't see it that much anymore. A guy being this efficient and getting this deep into the game. I wonder if he's going to be able to close it out. There's just something about that ninth inning. But being at under 100 pitches, he's still got plenty of fuel left in the tank. Strikeout. Now only one out remaining. Dude, I think even when you know he's got that pitch in his arsenal, you're still going to have a hard time recognizing and reacting to it unless you've seen it several times. And honestly, if you can hit that pitch, I'm concerned because you probably can't hit anything else that he throws. That one right there locked him up. Harris in the box with two gone. And takes a look at a called strike. That one pushed to the left and foul. Matt is just one strike away. The New York Mets are your National League champs. Congratulations to the National League champions. This team clearly excited, and they deserve every bit of this moment. Enjoy it now, but get yourselves ready for the biggest series of your lives. For my partner, Chris Singleton, and our great crew, thanks for watching the National League Championship Series on MLB The Show.